Hello and welcome to another Open TTD video. I know it's been quite a long time and that does kind of explain why it is a new series. I mean, a lot happened for me the past year, moving houses, did tons of things and amongst that I managed to lose the recordings I had for the past series. So I'm going to start again, but I'm going to start from scratch on a map and I will record everything that I do on that map, upload it here so you can see what I do and hopefully it answers questions that some of you have been asking as well. So I have a map here, it's a 512 by 512 map, so it's quite small. Um, I'm hoping that obviously with it being a bit smaller it is going to be easier to fill. I mean I've worked about one or two years on some maps and that have been huge and I've not even really come out of one corner of the map. So we're going to set something achievable. And what we're going to do is try to we're going to try to connect every single industry in every town by some form of transport, and there are a lot of towns as well. So um, there's a few settings that I actually want to tweak before we start the video. Um, one of them is actually to drive on the left. That isn't something I had anticipated, but something I shall do. One of the first ones is I want to turn on that vehicles never expire. This means that we still have the same selection of vehicles, be it 50, 70 years into the future, as for some reason all the trains kind of boil down to being um, you only having a selection of four, which isn't really the best. Another thing we're going to do, which a few people asked about before, is under cargo distribution you do have this option, the distribution mode. Now if you set this to symmetric, what it means is that passengers will have a destination and if they go to that destination, they will want to return from that destination at a later date. So we've got like two towns here. Symmetric means that if five people come from this town to this town, five people will want to go back. Asymmetric means that ten people may come from this town to this town, but only five might want to go back, but ten people go to this one, etc. So it kind of it makes it a bit random where people want to go. Now it does make sense for it to be symmetric. It's kind of closer to what it would be in real life, I guess, although it's not perfectly symmetrical. But um, that's what I'm going to use because it does make things a bit more predictable. So uh, we have £97,000 in the bottom corner. That's because it took a little bit of time to get the recording set up for this video. And where are we going to start? I usually tend to start in the corners of the maps because you really have like one path to work outwards from there. It makes it a bit easier for us, but there's no real differences. You don't have to do anything as such. And this looks to be the biggest town here, so this is probably where we're going to start our base. Now the first thing I'm thinking is what the cheapest um, way is we can actually generate some money, which is going to be bus routes, isn't it? And the first thing I'm thinking is how to actually build one of these bus routes, what the best method's going to be. If you look here, you can actually see that there's sort of a line of towns. So you've got this little town here, Rinwood. Uh, and this, all these up here. There is like a line of which we could connect up via a bus route. Because if you connect them all up and timetable them, it does mean that you get quite a lot more um, areas included. Um, obviously, the more towns that we connect, these are going to start growing and then we'll have more passengers. So it's going to be beneficial for us to try and grow these towns now. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to build, build a bus route first. Now I want to make everything nice and neat. Whoops, I am paused. That would not help proceedings. There are a few things I'm going to edit in here. I do want to turn on Magic Bulldozer because the town council allowance thing really does annoy me after a while, to be completely honest. I usually give myself money because I'm lazy, but I'm going to try and see if I can do this completely legit. So, let's build town through here. Now I do try and keep the paths um, sort of you know, straight really, I guess it makes sense. But I don't want them turning round and things, so what we'll do is... Shall we make it go to this town here? Might as well, hadn't we? There's no reason for it not to. So, let's connect up this town, and because this is the last town it'll visit, let's make a uh, this a loop. So if we put... Oh, God, we're Horrible pink colour. Let's go and change that. Let's be a nice dark blue and white. We're going to be classy. So, if I put the bus stop there, the bus is going to have to loop around. It does make it a bit easier and it shaves some time off your timetable. Let's not build a tramway. Let's build another bus station there. Now, that's this is really the centre of the town. So, it would be easier to have it here, though. 
there's nothing really going to build this way. So what I'm going to what I'm thinking of as I build these stations is um the long term effect it will have on that area. So here for example, I'm going to put the bus station there. Now the reason for that is that as this town grows, it's going to grow from this point to so this area here is in the future going to be inhabited. So I want this to be the central point of um the town's expansion. So I'll put that there. But what I'll also do is create a road here. So that as the town starts growing, it is going to grow some buildings around my, obviously, the bus stop. And that way we'll obviously earn more revenue. I'm also going to remove that and that. Because these little cul-de-sacs, they, they could become buildings in themselves when the town grows. So I want to try and create as much space around the stations that I'm putting down as possible. Because overall, it does bring in more revenue. Though it does take some time to uh, start off. So we have that little spur there done. Now where can I put the bus station in the town centre? Let's see, this looks more central here. Um, what I like to do with the big cities is create a bus station where buses can... Uh, there's more than one um, bus stop for a bus to use. Obviously because it's going to be going to become like a central point for quite a few bus routes, I want to make sure there's enough capacity there. And what I'm currently thinking is, where can I build the bus stop which will require the least amount of destruction to the town? Which seems to be demolishing just these two buildings, creating roads there. Wah! Sorry, that's my cat headbutting the microphone. And placing two bus stops just there. Now, what this creates is more capacity for bus routes that we may want to have in future. I'm going to demolish that building. Extend this road. Let's pull that down there. And then we need to make a loop here, so we'll just do that. We'll put the bus stop there because it needs to enter that loop. Otherwise, the buses might go up here and try to turn around. Put the bus stop there. Don't know why that's called the steel mill, it's quite far away from the steel mill. So there we have a bus route. So our buses are going to come right from there right down to here. Now we need a central bus depot. So let's create one. Put it there. Again, I was going to put one here. But immediately I thought, well, actually, no. Because as the town expands again, there's quite a lot of area for things to be built here. So I want to try and encourage that. That's the most important thing you can do if you are going to run a passenger oriented system is uh, planning ahead with your town and just giving them the space to build new new buildings. So that bus depot is down. So let's go through. Let's pick. These tend to be quite fast, reliable buses. So we'll build a bus. Well, build a bus. We'll make a bus or buy one. Click. Here. 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 Let's make this bus route. Another thing I'm going to turn off actually is breakdowns. And then we'll have a service at the end. I'm going to turn off breakdowns because that is another thing which becomes a little bit tedious. Breakdowns, no. So that's running its bus route. Now there's actually quite a big town here as well. I don't really want to invest a lot of money into connecting small villages by rail because it it tends to be that the amount of money you spend just isn't worth what you get back. But I will I am always interested in connecting towns which have generally more than about one to one and a half thousand people, and um, because it does tend to be worth the money. So straight away I'm thinking, well, if if this is obviously is where we're going to start building the railway, um, this town to this town is probably a good first step. I mean, the railway is going to have to come up this kind of island stretch, isn't it? So it would make sense that it starts here and curves around to a station here. So as I'm building the bus route, I am going to start on the train tracks. Now the first thing I want to do is create the path in which the railway is going to go. So let's tunnel it under here. We might as well. So this is what I like to do, just sort of carve out the path that the railway is going to take. So when it gets to this town here, 
so you have made a space for the build to obviously for the town to replace the buildings I've just demolished and I want to make some space uh, by connecting some roads for more buildings to flourish on the other side there we go so both towns have now a lot more road in which they can actually put buildings on let's make a bridge here so that's going to be the path that the uh, railway will take my money like my money's on 50,000 let's connect this that's the second bridge that I forgot to build so let's pop a bridge over there it is tempting to make a train station there because it's kind of made for it but think about it now shall I have the station taking up this space here or should I demolish this little road so it's closer to the city center because that is quite far away from the center over here I guess ideally having it there would have been best but I'm gonna demolish this little road just to get it closer so as I'm going like I said just making room for more buildings to grow. Probably shouldn't be doing this with how little money I have, but, you know. Let's remove that. <laughs> These eventually, even if I leave them, because they're not connected to a road, they will just fade away. So let's demolish those. And then let's build a station here. So we'll just build two platforms for now, but we could add another two up here in future. Let's make it... So what we'll do is we'll have a buffer. I do like making the stations look somewhat realistic. I'll use the Dutch station pack because that tends to be the one that's closest to kind of a modern day UK style. Right now here's another consideration. When I'm building all my stations am I going to group everything together so the town has one central kind of station that everything's used or I'm gonna, am I going to make them a separate station so a bus station uses this and the trains use this. I'm going to hold down control and connect it to the bus station. So by holding down control as I place the station, it lets me, it asks me what I want to do, what that tile should be a part of, so I can build a separate station, or I can obviously make it adjacent to one that's nearby. And that's what I'm going to do. So now the train station is part of the bus station. So let's make it. Um, give people a shelter, not that it matters in the slightest. Benches. And an extra platform. So the buffers at the end, they although they take up one tile, they don't actually um, accommodate trains in them. So the station is effectively three tiles long. So that's my limit for train sizes. Does that mean that so, yep, so they can access both station. Yeah, okay. So, now I created the first railway. There's £26,000 remaining. We also need a depot, so I'm just going to go behind these trees and create a train depot. And we will make a station in Flonhill. So, I'm good. there's a really good selection of footbridges in this park. So if I place a footbridge there, and one of the... Away! Go away! One on the opposite side. It does kind of look like a station would look, really. A bridge with just steps down to a platform. And let's make the station look nice and pretty. Make it three tiles, which is the same tile size as this station, just so we know that if we ever have trains on the route, they're going to work for all the different stations. And what we'll do for now, because this is the limit of what I'm going to make the railway at the moment, considering we only have 22,000, is I'm going to add this um, siding in here. I'm going to use a path signal here, because there's a junction ahead. Path signals basically mean that no matter whether there's a train in this section of track, if as long as the route to wherever the train wants to go is clear, it'll let it through. 
And then what we'll do is, we need another path signal. And I'll put that just here, just ahead of the station. And then we'll signal the rest. Oh, there, actually. And then, path signal's here. So this little stretch of railway is done. So what will happen at the moment is... Oh, I'd better do this as well, actually. Put a reverse path signal there. That means the train cannot leave that platform at the other end. So if I go here, let's make a small train. Let's just use a sprinter. No, I don't have enough money. By 5,000. Let's borrow... 20,000 and treat ourselves to a nice day out with the rest. Create a three carriage train. Give it some orders. Hello, cat. So we want it to go to the far end of the station. So I just double click that order and it changes whereabouts in the station it will park. And then we'll go to the middle of Flonhill. Excuse me, I'm about to sneeze. <coughs> <coughs> That's what I get for the cat hanging around me. That's all it really needs. Go. And there we are. So we've now got a short train route from one town to the other. That's already full. So what in theory can happen now is a passenger can come, say, from Fonning Hall to Reddingstone on the bus and then get the train over to this Flon Hill over here. So you'll start having kind of a knockout effect. If I click on this little plus here, it'll show me where the passengers want to go. So 557 want to go to Fonning Hall, which is this. It's more than the entire town itself. So let's go back and quickly timetable this bus. So click on here. This shows me what uh, timetable the bus actually has. Now, obviously, at the moment, because it's set to wait for one day at every station, that was um, when the bus ran its first route, there were no passengers to pick up. So, naturally, it's not going to spend any time at that station. So, what we need to do is go and give the bus a longer waiting time at every branch. That means, as well, that even if a bus only takes one day to, re to um, unload and load back up again, the other two days can come off the uh, late time that it's behind, so it does actually work out well to give you buses lots of time. Another thing I like to do is, at the end of the bus route, or any route, sorry, pick a station that you know is going to be quiet, so this one, Broadway. Now it's very likely that no other bus routes will ever use this station, because it's, you know, it's away from everything else, there's nowhere else it can go. So I'm going to give it a wait time of 10 days. That means if this bus has been caught in, like at the bus station here, or it has, has had to pick up more passengers, it can reset the time that it's late here. So it'll obviously, it, let's say the bus is 30, to day, 30 days late. Um, it only takes three visits to this station for it to catch itself back up and go back on time. I'm going to rename this because I just want to keep myself nice and organized. Because when you're dealing with a lot of vehicles, it be, can become very confusing. I'm going to call it Reddingstone. Let's think of a name for this coastline one. Because it's kind of a coast, isn't it, I guess? And let's go here. And in this, I'm going to put Reddingstone coastline. And then drag the bus into there. So now it's part of this. So if I now make copies of this bus, click clone vehicle, I'll hold down control as I clone the vehicle, and then keep. I'm keeping to hold down control what it'll do is these buses that have been copied they share the same why does it show it oh here they share the same orders so if I ever have to edit the timetable for this one bus every single bus that is copied by it will also be affected which is very 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 easy and it takes a lot of time off my hands I've only I could only afford three buses in fact no I've got loans haven't I Let's go Wonga the rest and get some more in here. So as soon as this, um, I'm going to release a bus every time the bus previously gets to the station. When I'm releasing new buses into the wild, um, I want to make sure that I have like a reference point as to when I know 
to release the next bus so they kind of are released at the same intervals if that makes any sense at all so um you can obviously time it if you really wanted to but i just like you know i know when the bus gets to this station just to let the next one go it doesn't matter if the last one's a bit off with its time in fact i've made a terrible mistake because uh, the buses go the other way, don't they? Okay, I'm going to pick a somewhere down here to release the next bus then. Where's this one going to go? Right, I'll wait till the bus gets to this station. I'm going to enjoy this fast forwarding while it lasts because the more and more buses um, and vehicles operate the map, the slower the fast forward button becomes such as with um, resource intensive games I guess I'll send that one to the depot and delete it just because that's the easiest way to reset its timetable there we go so this bus up here it's nearly completed its route so by the time this bus gets to this station, yeah, I want me to release another one, so we'll get rid of those. Yeah, so look, by the time I've released it, it's already there. So now, this bus route is populated, so we have a fully operational bus route. Um, with How many buses are actually running on the route? Let's have a look. Five buses. So we have five buses and a train. What's the train doing? Oh dear, I've made a terrible mistake. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. I um, made this signal the wrong direction. That's definitely not going to be... Uh, that's not a good move. The, these passengers have literally just been going backwards and forwards from the depot the past... How long has that been? Month? <laughs> Since um, I discovered um, that I needed to complete the bus route. They're not going to be happy passengers. Hooray! So the train is finally going to Flonhill and... Everyone can sleep easy, I'm sure. I wonder why that one was at red then. I was um, quite concerned for a second. Ah. That train stopped very quickly. What that means is I'm going to turn on the realistic acceleration models. Just so they slow down a bit, um, a bit easier. So we now have a functioning bus route. And we have... A, the start of a rail, every rail network. It's uh, it's looking good. What's our next step? There's not really anything we can connect by sea. I mean, we could make a ferry over here, but it'll cost a lot of money, and it's not going to give us much revenue in, re in return. We could connect these little villages via a bus route. That's going to be our next step. We won't need a bus to run too often, but the more villages and towns we can feed in. It creates demand for certain cities, so what you'll find is you might that one village may be really popular for some reason amongst passengers, and you can make a lot of money um, transporting people to those villages. Which, I can kind of see the uh, real-life implications of it, I guess. You may have certain towns and villages which are popular tourist destinations and such as that. So let's make um, we've got a three-bus route, like a three-bus stop bus route. Let's go back here and let's select a cheaper bus that's not going to carry as many people. Let's see what we've got. We only need two or three of them. That's like an ambulance over anything else. Black cab, <laughs> five passengers each. Let's just run a taxi company up the uh, in the middle of the country. I'm sure there's some more buses further down. Nope, I have been mistaken. Dennis Dart. Come on, I just want something cheap and fast. These all look like old people buses. That one's only 4,000. Let's go for that one. So, Reading Stone. That place. Get out the way, cat. I'm trying to click on the bus stops. She's pestering me for attention. Service there. Start the bus route and automatically fill, please. No, please don't walk over my keyboard. I don't want you talking in cat. You've already done that today. 
So that's our second little bus route. While it's um, auto filling its timetable, let's see how, how our other stations are getting getting along. So that's fine. Three passengers waiting there. Where do they want to go? One to Flonhill. Well, hey, that poor chap on his billy. Funny Hall's doing fine, everyone's taken care of. Yep. Yep. Nobody up the wrong way. Then you've got Reddingstone with 2,700 people waiting. 1,000 want to go to Flon Hill, which is this train route. Hmm. <laughs> How many want to go to... What it might be worth doing is... So this train's doing a effective job. What we could also do is put in a um, put in a bus route to ease the train's demand. So let's create a bus station adjacent to it. Now the buses are inherently going to have to stop here anyway. I mean, it might as well. It's got no reason. It's going to have to go through that bus station, so we might as well just make it call there too. Let's go here. Let's select a big high density bus. Wow, buses are cheap. 3,000. 52, 74 passengers or 70 passengers. But that one's 42 more than hour. That's 45. Oh, okay. That's better in every way. Let's do that one. You can go here. And then you can go here. Autofill. So we've got two bus routes that are technically under construction. Look at this little cheap ass bus go. Looks like a prison bus. You're the bus off, um, what is it? Walking Dead or something. So once that's finished its, uh, its duty, let's change all these to three while we're waiting for it to complete its last route. Stay there for three minutes. We can also give the bus a name while we're waiting. What can we call this little stretch? This is Prudding, Pruddingbury. It's on a hill. Let's call it the Pruddingbury Hill Line. I'm so creative with my names. Pruddingbury Hill Line. Oh yeah, we have the other bus to name as well, don't we? Let's call this the Flon Hill Terminator. Let's give it an extreme name. Terminator 1. I don't know what it's terminating. It doesn't even really terminate because it goes in a loop, but okay. And it's not even using the road I've given it, it's going in a big loop. How dare you. Right. So, let's... This bus is about to... Uh, Go on its merry way. When it gets to its final stop, I'll release the second bus. So there's two buses pretty much at um, the opposite ends of the route. So I'm on with that one. And the double decker bus, which has now just arrived back at Reddingston. We'll create a few of these. Just to make sure we have the capacity just to um, carry quite a few passengers. Because that's going to create us quite a bit of money. How much is this train making us? See, 11,000. That's three whole buses. That's three buses. It's amazing. Nope. Don't want that, please. Not interested. Oops. My apologies. Set that one off. This one's at the end. Ah, go. You're late. Wait for the double decker bus to get to here, then I'll know to set the next one off from the depot. How much money has this one made? 665 quid! Four! That's someone's rent paid for. Go! Faster! Oh yeah, I have a faster button. Hooray! High capacity bus route is completed. So, I'm going to end the, well, the section of episodes here um, we have created. 
a local bus route. On the south section of this island, we've created another little bus route, which is aimed at connecting a few towns. We've created a third bus route, well, hey, which has got double-decker buses in, which will probably be vandalised very soon. And then we've got the startings of a rail network and a train, which uh, can now work, that I've actually put the signals in correctly. So it's all looking good. Hopefully you won't be waiting too long until my next video. I'm going to record it very soon, and thanks for watching.